Now, Bobby Lim Brothers is here today in District 10. We're bringing you to Duchess Avenue to show you a four-bedder. And I love this TV console, 1733 square feet. I love this sheer size, below 2.9 million. $120,000 of ID renovations. And if you want something ready to move in, let's go check out this place. Let's talk about the location first. So we're right on here at District 10 within the Bukit Tima and Clave. This area is a very well known for its good class bungalow areas such as Rebecca Park, Victoria Park as well as Belmont Park just to name a few. Something very interesting about living in this zone is that the roads here are all named after titles of royals. Now for Hawker Fair, of course, you have the popular Adam Road Food Centre as well as the Empress Road Food Centre. Shopping centres in the close vicinity, you have Coronation Plaza as well as Serene Centre. So if we talk about ease of accessibility, if you're driving, you can actually cut through the entire Holland Road which will bring you to the Orchard Road shopping belt just within 10 minutes. And if you're heading to the CBD zone, you have connectivity via the AYE which is just a short like 15 or 20 minutes drive away. So you're also just about 10 minutes drive away to the entire One North and the Science Park area right on from Holland Road to Buena Vista itself. If you travel through Duchess Avenue onto Coronation Road West, it takes you all the way to Holland. And if you travel through Duchess Road to Queen's Road, that takes you to Ferrer Road. If you're taking public transport or if your kids are taking public transport, Duchess Crest is just about an 8 to 10 minutes walk away to Tankaki MRT. You have plenty of connectivity right on over here to all the different colours of the MRT lines itself, which means ease of travel to bring you to anywhere in Singapore. So if you compare this to the Stevens or Holland or Watan Estate where there are a bit more choices of condominiums right there but what it also means is it's a bit more densely populated as compared to where we're at at Duchess because there are only a total of about 7 to 8 condo and apartment developments Duchess Crest being one of the largest one that sits on a huge piece of 314,000 over square feet of land 99 year leasehold which lease started from 1995 so it has a balance of about 73 years right now TOP in 1998 and was developed by Winfaith in Investment Private Limited. So the entire Duchess Crest is formed up by four-storey low-rise with unit layout types ranging from two bedders to four bedders and townhouse units. And of course sizes ranging from 936 square feet all the way to 4,263 square feet. So there are a total of 24 stacks of four bedders. There are mainly two outer horizontal facings along Duchess Avenue and the other one that faces Fachok Institution. At the corners, we are actually flanked by Duchess Avenue Playground on the right-hand side and the tennis courts on the left hand side and this is the type d6b unit this is your south orientation and towards your balcony will be your north facing 1733 square feet the second largest four beta unit in the entire duchess crest the living room is among one of the biggest amongst all the four beta layouts the living and dining zone itself 525 square feet whereas most of the other smaller four betas come in at about 400 odd square feet for their living room so we are almost 120 square feet bigger in terms of just living and dining space kitchen a yard as well as a utility room and WC and of course you have four full bedrooms, two full bathrooms, a powder room for your guests and of course additional storages within the home itself. So the MCST fees for a four bedder standing at 1,700 odd square feet is just about $557 per month which I think is very reasonable in today's context. So the home has about $120,000 of ID renovations already pumped in just a mere three years ago and we're going to show you right now so let's kickstart the home tour. We're starting the living room today because I love this sheer size. Right on in the corner, you still have space for kind of like a lounging armchair with such a very nicely put in ottoman. And there's still space to kind of like put in plants and greenery in your home itself. And I love this TV console because it has almost like this marble like laminate finish. And right on below, right, this is actually solid surface. It's going to last you for many years to come. It can also act as a place for you to put in kind of like your PS5 or your media boxes. And if you move on to the left hand side, you have kind of like four panels of shoe cabinetry space as well as more storage spaces inside. There's also a grommet hole that has been carved out so that all your wires can go into this area to connect to your TV media boxes. So it's all hidden away, very, very neat. And you still have space for this huge upright piano. So if your kids are having piano lessons, this is great space for you. 
this is actually the entrance of the home itself. So you kind of overlook your entire living over on the left hand side and then towards your right, you have this very nicely done up dining zone. Now it's like a six seater, but I think this space can definitely accommodate kind of up to like an eight seater perhaps, or even 10 if you like. Now of course your flooring in the entire living and dining zones are all clad in marble. And you also have this kind of like center dividing bookshelf, which this is movable, but if you want to kind of have about this segregation of space, possibilities you can do up kind of like a feature wall right here, timber strip, so you can still see the kind of like your guests in the living room while still separating the space from the dining. Of course, in the balcony zone, you actually see a span of four full panels of glass panels. Because this is a north-south facing in general, you also get that crosswind ventilation. Good size enough to put in like two lounging chairs right on here. If you have green fingers, some planting right on the balcony itself as well. Or if you want a bit more additional privacy, you can simply do up zip tracks right here. If you have kids, you can also do the Invisigrill. So that is additional safety for your kids. So this is the back of the home itself facing towards the south. So on my right hand side, you actually have a storage room. So lots of space. And this can ideally be also your helper's room because there is actually a window right here. And then right across, you have the WC. In the entire kitchen, there's like two different segregation of zoning. So once you actually go past this cabinetry, it's your cooking zone. And right on the back is more like your storage, kind of like your living helper zone. So a lot of storage along the way. And back in this era, your rubbish chute is still done in the home itself. So it's more complex. You don't have to like take it outside. So this curtain over here actually hides the service door, which our owners do not really use right now. If you really don't need access to this, you can actually kind of like build up more storage over here if you like, or you can simply put in your kitchen appliances here as well. And back into the cooking zone, this is of course your hood and hop, very good condition, well maintained. So you have of course storages of different heights. You have drawers, you have deep drawers for your pots and pans, storage on top as well. Then you have your upper storages, which are in these bloom hinges. I simply love that it has a lot of table and countertop space. So you can do your food preparation right over here, your washing zone. There's still space to do your cutting of your food and vegetables right on here as well. So located right under this solid surfaces, our homeowners have also dedicated it for the washer and dryer. Before I show you the bedrooms, let's have a chat about the pricing comparisons as well as project analysis around this area. Let's go. So let's start with the first one at Casa Bella, which is a freehold, small size development at 82 units. Price quantum there for a four bedder is going at about 4.39 million. At Duchess Residences, which is a triple nine year leasehold, good as freehold, total 120 units. And the price tag there for a four bedder is going at about 4.6 million. If we compare it also to some of the new launches in the area, for example, at Fourth Avenue Residences, which is a 99 year leasehold. A four bedroom plus study is going at about 3.65 million. At Royal Green, which is a freehold, four bedroom premium is going at about 4.2 million dollars. Now, if we come back to Duchess Crest, this unit here at Duchess Crest really hits the sweet spot in terms of the trifecta. We have a very good size, 1,733 square feet of space, keeping your quantum at under 2.9 million. Location wise, we are just eight to 10 minutes to the Tangkaki MRT. So if you want to keep your quantum below that 2.9 million dollar mark and you want something that is not like a too boutique a project because you want to have more amenities as well as a communal space within the development then I think you would consider Duchess Crest because this unit that we have here is a 4 bedroom at 1733 square feet the unit also has about 120,000 already pumped in in terms of renovation so if you do a quick comparison if you buy something that's a bit more original condition or not as renovated there's about 2 other units going at about 2.7 odd million and if you put in the renovation cost of let's say about 120,000 that will actually set you close to our current asset asking at about 2.8 odd million dollars. But what you have to go through, of course, now amidst the COVID situation, there is expected delays from the ID renovation. Then perhaps you want to consider buying something ready to move in at the price tag of about 2.82 million dollars. Because that will definitely save you time and energy as well as remove that uncertainty of the timeline of uh, ID renovation works. Starting in this common room, you see two single beds already in front over in the corner. If you look at the floor plan, there's actually still space to add in an additional wardrobe right on over there. But right now, the wardrobe space is indented into this corner. So you have two sides of wardrobe spaces. You have kind of like shelving space in the middle, three drawers as well as some display spaces with plugs and PowerPoints already located right here. And the flooring, of course, in your bedrooms are your parquet floorings, which are very well maintained. So when you come by, you can take a look for yourself. Let me show you the common bathroom first. 
So this one is actually your third bathroom which functions as like a powder room. It's more for your guests to use. The vanity surface is done up in this very nice marble look-alike. Very well maintained. Sink is under mount so it's easy to clean. All your sanitary fittings have just been changed out just about three years ago. Now heading to the master, this is actually 236 square feet of space. Just in comparison, it's almost double of the earlier common bedroom we showed you, which stands at 120 square feet, which in today's context is still very good size. You get these three huge panels of windows overlooking towards the south. So there's still walkway space, even with like a king bed kind of placed in. What our homeowners have done is they've done up this entire wall. It's almost like a feature wall paneling. These are actually laminates that look a bit like rustic kind of feel. The bedside tables are also wall hung, so they don't kind of take up your bed side table space so you can leave that for charging your phone you also have individual switches to control the lights as well so right over here so very convenient if you're doing some bedtime reading before going to bed you don't have to disturb your spouse you can just turn on this little reading light tucked away in the corner it's a very good size dresser table but this is of course movable so it doesn't come with the sale of the home you can also convert this to kind of like a work from home station if you like or if you prefer this to be a dresser i think it's up to your preference So you kind of have like three different areas in your walk-in wardrobe. You also have this privacy door that's already done up. So if you can shut this when you're kind of doing a change after your bath. And something interesting we noted is also the walk-in wardrobe has an additional panel or window of its own. You have like this huge long bath at the corner over here. And you still have a standing shower, very good size, all very well maintained. So this entire bathroom was totally redone from the floor up, even the solid surfaces, all the sanitary fittings as well as the long bath. Something interesting here is that also you have a very long kind of a countertop. So the entire vanity is clad in this solid surface, which is like a marble look alike and super wide span mirror. Your wife can be doing his or her makeup. Sorry, his or her makeup. <laughs> So in the master bath, you don't only have one ventilation window. It's already very rare to find it. You have like two ventilation windows. So definitely good to dispel the moisture after a bath. This is now the kids' home-based learning room, their study room and tuition room as well. So there's even space to put in like an oval. It's like a mini meeting table. So lots of shelving with glass see-through that's already been done up. So you can easily locate your assessment books or storybooks and things like that. Over at the little end over there, these are also all built in. So this will also stay. You have like a pseudo kind of like bay windows with storage at the bottom, which are pull-out drawers as well. So you kind of want to keep it as like a study or a work from home kind of a room that's possible as well. Along this walkway, it's not wasted because you have additional storages right on here. So this is like a pretty deep storage where your DB box is also located. This is of course a full-fledged bathroom number two. So you have your sink, your WC as well as your shower zone. And of course you have storage behind some of these mirrors as well for your bath accessories. Now this room comes in at about 130 odd square feet, so still very good size. You technically have space to put in a queen or king size bed facing towards the south, overlooking the landed and clay, similar to what we saw at the kitchen yard area. Wardrobe here is now movable, but this can be your ideal built-in wardrobe space. So you have a barbecue area, you have a basement car park, the clubhouse as well as the multi-purpose hall. You have a swimming pool, tennis courts as well as the kids' wedding pool. So there's a lot of schools populated into this area. So primary schools within one kilometer, Nanyang Primary, Raffles Girls Primary. For secondary schools, you have Hua Chong Institution, Nanyang Girls High School, St. Margaret Secondary. For your tertiary, you have National Junior College as well. In terms of recreation, you have the Singapore Botanic Gardens uh, as well as Holland Village, just a short drive away. And shopping malls, you have Coronation Shopping Plaza, Holland Road Shopping Centre. For supermarkets, just to name a few, you have one at Coronation Plaza as well as Guthrie House. Now, if you're looking to live in District 10 and you prefer a more quiet, serene enclave here at Duchess Avenue and you want to keep your price quantum below the $2.9 million mark while still getting a very good size 1,733 square feet type of 4 bedder ready to move in with renovations of about $120,000 already pumped in. So if you want to come for a physical viewing, do contact our listing managers. For more information on our property, do click on the link in our description. And if you want to check out more home tours by Property Living Brothers, do subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the notification bell so you'll be notified of upcoming new home tours. I hope you enjoyed this home tour with us. My name is Mark Chan from Property Lim Brothers and as always, happy to show you the place. Take care. One, two, three. In the bedroom.
in the bedroom. In the bedroom. Um, right now, what are we gonna do? Or oh, should I say this when I start the 557? <laughs> Cancel that. Okay, let's talk about the... And of course, um, the other thing is that... Uh... Oh, I say too many. 